All right, guys. Welcome back to our podcast. This is our podcast. Our podcast is called <laughs> Difficultish. How'd you say it so many times? It's a podcast about different South Asian narratives. And it is hosted by myself, Ashnoon, and my co-host. My name is Mahua, and we got a special guest today. We I got actually, a special guest. I actually wrote up a nice little intro for you. Oh. And, I, and I, I don't do that. <laughs> I so, know okay. I you know that this is a special, yeah, special Mahua. guest, okay? Go ahead. So, we have Miss Munzi today. Wow. Okay. So Munzi is a Bangladeshi American chef who went from becoming a nano engineer to opening her own restaurant called the Monkey King in Damn. Bushwick, Brooklyn. Also one of Shout the best food uh, places that I've ever had. She is constantly breaking barriers as a daughter of immigrants and is so passionate about bringing a blend of Chinese Bangladeshi American cuisine to the forefront of New York while also making a space for other Bangladeshi small business owners and Damn. creatives with her success. I am so grateful to call her a good friend of mine, Damn. and we are so excited to have you on our show. We are, <laughs> Mumsy, Thank you so much. Wow. And you're literally like on. our second video guest. Like, yeah, this crazy. is a big deal. We were so excited to have you on. Thank yeah, you. Was... Thank you so much for this opportunity. I mean, I'm very excited. I love you. I love you already, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just excited. You. Guys... Oh my god, we're both all M's. Huh? Oh, we are. Oh my Mashu god. Mahua, M and M and M. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, before we get further, um, I got I got a surprise for you. Yes. Is um, this a surprise we've been waiting for? This yeah. is a surprise we've been waiting for. So, you know, she was saying that, like, you have a restaurant and, like, you like to cook. Well, you're not the only chef here. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> there's, a, there's two chefs in this room. Um, our listeners know that, like... I don't I, even consider myself a chef, so... All right, then there's one. one. <laughs> there's one chef in this room. Uh, the, the you were so excited about this. Listeners know that, you know, I love to cook. What's on the menu. And I've been waiting for someone who cooks to come on the podcast so I can cook for them so i made you something i made you i'm gonna go get it just i'm talking. so happy i did not eat anything because i was saving for myself for chick-fil-a it's not a lot but <laughs> i'm hyped yo it smells good in here though just know it's so funny because she literally came into the elevator or came onto my floor and she was like oh something smells really good in this hallway and so machine was so gassed Here by that compliment i made you i made you a a bengali Ooh. kebab do I eat it now? Beef kebab. Yeah, yeah. I, I need a I need a live taste test. <laughs> and also, and he put the lemon in there too. Yeah. yeah. And also, I, you can be honest about it. Yeah, please. Hold on, let's please be Wait, before you get. Yeah, oh. before I, I need I need to preface. I oversalted. I'm it's sorry. Okay. She said you're checking your blood pressure. <laughs> I oversalted. Okay. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So put the lemon on it's it. It's all good. It's all good. You know, I it need It smells a, amazing. Thank you. Yeah. I love the fact that you gave me the lemon in there. Yeah, yeah. you know, I need to, you know, cut down that salt. Okay. All right. I need Wait, a lot is it a shami kebab? What? Or a beef kebab? It's a beef, beef kebab. kebab. Yeah, yeah, beef kebab. ASMR. Don't mind the salt. It's salty. I know. I know, but focus on the flavor. That's and this all. is only his second time making it ever. In Listen, life. be honest with me. Like, I, Yo, like I really like you know this like cooking shit. Like, you I'm can really handle nice it. with it. What's up? Oh yeah. Oh. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I heard it. <laughs> yeah, I heard it here. <laughs> Listen, I'm not all talk. That's all I'm saying. Yo, honestly. Okay. It's a little salty, but if you have it with rice or roti or salt yeah. and, like, or something and then lettuce sauce. and tomato, like yeah. it's perfect. Okay. Yeah. It's perfect. Okay. And inside is like. It's like nice and moist. Yeah. I need and to I know say you went to town with the seasoning. Yo. Feel me? Like I, I accidentally got a Jamaican curry powder instead of like brown people curry powder. So if it's like tastes like a little Jamaican, mm -hmm. you know, like that's why. Yeah, you know, we love like, like fusion food out here. Oh, like oh. Your mom. oh, you heard that? Oh, no, guy. the first time I made it, it tastes a lot like my that's mom. That's a good too, one. So yeah. Are we, are yeah, we ready yeah. to start? Let's move forward. <laughs> Let's start. All right. So we got Miss Munzi here. She's the most like confident inspirational woman like especially the bottom of the woman like she's very authentic with everything that she does so let's get started okay let's do it so you have your your background in nano engineering just casually mm -hmm. okay and now you're not doing that mm -hmm. at all all right so let's talk about the journey to become a nano engineer i don't even know what that is yeah, what is that what is that like atoms and then and the transition yeah <laughs> atoms happening? like that's smart you know i get that question all the time what the fuck is yeah, yeah. what is that engineering or nanotechnology i gotta um, know i guess scientists just you know they found out that when you alter atoms on a nano level uh-huh it changes all its properties from chemical to physical properties uh -huh. and with those new um properties that come out of people can utilize in different aspects whether it's in like technology um in the biofield mm -hmm. so um when i went to suny albany shout out to the great day hey, you know, um i was actually on the path of um 
biomed because I was going to go for pharmacy. Mm-hmm. I was a um, chemistry major in high school at Brooklyn Tech. So mm-hmm. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to be a pharmacist. Again, following the path of money. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, and what our parents want. And what our... Yeah. Techn- you know, funny, funny enough, my parents they never forced me to be an engineer or a doctor mm, they okay. just didn't want me to be a chef or an artist so exactly <laughs> what you are right now so, right you know like they, they never said you have to be an engineer or yeah. you have to be a doctor but they did say <laughs> no to me being a chef okay or me an artist so yeah, yeah. um me i just wanted to follow a path of money and right. pharmacy was like the first path i was like okay i can make good money i like chemistry yeah and then when i went to albany i saw this amazing pretty building and i was like oh what is this and i mm-hmm. read up a on it and albany at the time had the first college that was dedicated to nanotechnology where it had a whole curriculum in the world so it was the only college in the world dedicated to this major Mm -hmm. and um that took a lot of interest out of me and when i started doing my research all i saw was dollar sign dollar sign that's all it takes (laughs) and i was like okay i guess i'm gonna go for this so yeah i met like the you know um the, the head of the admission board made yeah. my mentor and then just figured out how I can like speed up the process to get admitted because yeah. they're very like you need to have like a 3.9 GPA oh, wow. and like I and you maintain that I mean from I graduated high school with a 77 okay you know so like average 77 oh, average oh, oh, yeah, yeah oh, okay. so like I really wasn't like I I I was always a nerd my Mm -hmm. whole life. And then, like, when I went to high school, I was just like, I want to be popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just want to enjoy freedom and do Uh things and not care about school, which was so stupid. But then once I got into Upstate and I started focusing more, um, I didn't have the grades at the time. So my first year, I had to really focus. And I was able to get a a 4.0. Oh, shoot. I was able to, like, get accepted into the Nano College. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, it's basically I focused in renewable energy, but uh, post grad I went into the semiconductor industry. Mm-hmm. So, um, and you built, to move from that from New yeah. York too, right? Yeah, to North Carolina, um, and uh, they had something called the Triangle Research Park, where NC, uh, North Carolina State, Chapel Hill, and Duke would make the Triangle Research Park, mm-hmm. and it's kind of considered like the si- Silicon Valley of yeah. the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I just started there, and basically we were building computer chips for different That's applications wild. um had a lot of projects with the department of defense um tesla you know just anything. just casual yeah. just slaying yeah just how did you feel stuff. when you were like working there like did you feel passionate about it did you feel like drained i was honestly never passionate about what i was studying again just i was forcing myself to learn what i needed to learn just to make money make money yeah. and um when i was in college i was one of like three or four females in my graduating class wow. and i i will never forget like my crew um when we were graduating like right before we were going over to get our diploma they had told me that they all had a bet that i would have i wouldn't have lasted no this far. and just because like they i know they say that because like the curriculum was very intensive. I mean, yeah. just to give you insight, everybody that was part of my class are now doing PhD at like Yale, MIT, Harvard's mm-hmm. like they're like mm-hmm. the top of the top, mm-hmm. like smart, very highly intellectual people. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people usually like that. They're not as social or friendly or just have like social cues like yeah. that. And me and here you have this one person. Me, yeah. Extroverted. Like, very extroverted burst of personality. Yeah. Like how I how i talk move dress i just yeah. don't fit with everyone else so yeah. they just i guess never took me serious to think like i i could do it that's and all messed up because it's like as a woman i feel like we are faced with so many like obstacles anyway and then when someone doesn't take you seriously because you don't like look the part but yeah. like what really does it mean to look the part because i, I mean, feel like if you wear too much makeup that means you yeah, don't take it, it seriously it, if you it don't. Just, there's there's this stereotype of how if you're very smart how you should be and if you're mm-hmm. overly confident sexy or anything like it's just like either your looks got you where you are mm-hmm. today and you yeah. can work hard or things come easy yeah. so you know i was very excited to get out of that space yeah and um when i said yes to my job um i didn't realize i said yes to the like i got interviewed by the parent company yeah where i saw a lot of females so i felt comfortable Mm -hmm. but then when i got the job i didn't realize i was part of their new company which was more male dominant and it was more in like the semiconductor rf device like that like again i funny thing 
when I started the first day at my job, they thought I was one of the engineer's daughter. Oh, they were wow. like they what like my uh, my team that I managed. They were like, yeah, we thought you were just like one of the, bring your kids to work day. That's what and then one of the other her the coworker hell? was like, no, that's our new boss. So here I, I am, wow. twenty five. You know, no, not even twenty five. I was twenty three at yeah. the time, managing like a team of hundred people plus yeah. that are way older than me yeah and you know it was just like fuck this is college all over again yeah. like here are people self like doubting me and i'm in a position where i'm only like one of the only few females and i i stood out and all i wanted to do was try to blend in so mm -hmm. like i completely changed my style my look mm -hmm. i was just trying i was wearing baggy clothes and everything because mm -hmm. i just wanted to blend in yeah and um just everything from college kind of like traumatized me where i was just like now i'm in a new state with no family, nobody. Yeah. Like, imagine in your early 20s, all you know is New York. Yeah. And then you're moving down to the South to start your adult different. career by yourself. And you're kind of, like, isolated. So, yeah. um, yeah. yeah. That reminds me of, like, uh, my sister. She's she's 29 now. She's older than me. After she graduated from UCF, she graduated with um, an uh, aeronautical engineering degree. She started working for Boeing. And um, she was, like, one of very, very few women that yeah. were over there. And she was telling me how I'm like she let so much shit just like fly by that like the men were saying or just yeah, like microaggressions. Like, yeah, just like little things that like she wasn't she she was too like not scared, but like I guess when you're like brand new in a company like that, just surrounded by men, like, like you don't want to make not, a scene. You don't yeah, want to make wanna, a scene, and yeah. then if you do speak up, then they like be like, oh, uh, she's like, she's uh, she's, uh, she's difficult. Or, yeah. like, you know, just like the negative like stereotypes that come with it. So it's yeah. like damned if you do, like damned if you do, damned, damned if you yeah. don't. Right? Yeah, so. Yeah, that was just that era. I mean, luckily, I was able to climb through the ranks real quickly because yeah. I was just like, I want to become a senior, move up, mm -hmm. make my money, and then figure yeah. out the next chapter. Yeah. So. so, all right. So, so you you do the nanotech, and then you get this this big girl job, and it's popping. What? Yeah. That's, when I, does the when does the cooking get involved? Like the passion. What's like, what's the switch up? So being in the south and like wait where we're in the south i north was carolina, in um, right? north carolina so durham i stayed in okay. durham mm -hmm. um and like i've been a city girl my whole life right mm -hmm. like I'm a yeah city that's a girl. big change yeah. from so Brooklyn. it was city a up. very big change yeah and i started doing a lot of like again i don't have any family or friends like i was i would like on the weekends i would go out and i would try to put myself out there to make friends yeah and i just couldn't connect with people just because like my mentality and where and like this the southern mentality was very different southern is very laid back it's chill mm -hmm. like they get to enjoy like more of like the beauty of life yeah. their goals are just to get a house and have a family mm -hmm. and settle down yeah. where here i am you want young, to turn on 23 i'm like all right i need to get to the next chapter in my career yeah. and like i'm talking about career career and like the people around me they're not they're like, chilling yeah they're not getting it you yeah. know so it was really hard and I think that's when I started to do a lot of things that I enjoy. So I started going out hiking by myself. I started cooking. I mean, like, yo, the amount of land you can get. <laughs> yeah. And, like, right. yo. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, like, space. having backyard and everything, that's something I've so never bad. had. So I started gardening. I started going to the farmer's market. Right. I started doing all these things that I would have never really done while I was in the city. Yeah. And um, I've always loved cooking. My goal was always to be a chef and open a restaurant. So I started just... You know, every day I loved going to like the farmer's market and like, mm -hmm. you know, grabbing a new vegetable that I don't even know of or I never yeah. cooked to it, but I saw it on Food Network and yeah. I'm like, yo, That's like me. I've seen this. Yeah. I want to try to cook with it. So I would just like be home and just cook a lot and then bring it to my office and just share it with my team. So, you know, that's like I really started cooking a lot while I was in North Carolina. I've always cooked, but yeah. that just took a whole nother level of like interest because I was actually growing my produce i was out in the farmer's market yeah. i'm being more literally a farmer with nature <laughs> so it was nice it was nice so i yeah. would say that's where it kind of like took to another level True. but it was always there it's so crazy when i like first met you like what f four or five years ago now you yeah. were so passionate about what you wanted to do like i remember you introduced yourself you're like yeah my name is munzi this is my background in nano engineering i am a chef or like you know i want to open my own restaurant and that was like really the beginning i feel like of you getting started on your actual dreams and it's just so wild to see where you are now you know because like that was just like an idea that you had yeah. and now you fully have a restaurant and you fully transitioned out of like a whole different career you yeah, know like when when you were in the south and like you you start like you know getting acclimated with like 
slower southern living you always felt like the urge to like whether it was like go back up to new york or just like do something a little bit more like ambitious like start a restaurant like you always felt like those are just like did you ever feel like you were succumbing to like the slower life because i'm kind of the opposite of you like i'm from florida and i'm up in new york right now and like i grew up like quite slow pace like yeah. i always had like a hustle mentality i always loved working but i think that was just uh given to me by like m- like my mom and shit but i think like the older i get and like the more time i spend here the more i realize like I yeah like i i work hard and like i get stuff done but like at night i like to like not work and yeah. i like to like slow down it's and funny shit. you say that because like I, I i like try to plant a seed in harvey i'm like yo babe you know like I wouldn't mind like getting a home in North yeah. Carolina yeah. and settling yeah. down in the South. And maybe nice, you do opening nice. another restaurant down there. Because yeah. like as you get older, you realize the things that you were cared about when you were younger, money and all this, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't life, sustain you. Yeah. Life is actually just enjoying life at the purest level. And it's like the little things. It's like connecting with nature, having time. What's the point of working so hard if you don't even have that time to spend with your friends, your family, your loved ones, right? Yeah. And that's what I was. Like I was working like 70 to 90 hours a week. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anybody. So I'd be driving back or flying back to New York. Um, I was in a toxic relationship at that time. So it was just a lot. Yeah. And um, 25, yo, January, I 19 turned 25 and I was at the lowest point. My, you were still at your job at that point? I was at my job yeah. and um, I got an offer to be a senior level Damn. For, an, 25. A, for an area where I had no interest because it was one of the hardest, hardest department. Okay. And... Um, I just really didn't want it. I'm a very social creature. I like to talk and mingle. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't like the only mingling I had was with my tools. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that was your friend. How you doing? Yeah. yeah. What's up? You know, like I think I think that tool, like once because as a senior, like my at that time I was one below, right? So as a senior, you take full ownership of the tools. Yeah. yeah. So that means like whenever they break, it don't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're overseas or whatever. You, you need to, to you, it. It. you need to be there back. And I that's a commitment I didn't want. And when yeah. my senior left, it automatically fell on my lap mm-hmm. without a question. And I was like, No, I don't want this. So yeah. me thinking, I'm like, yo. At this point, I'm getting very stagnant in my career, and I'm just trying to like fly by. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm you're, just, you're 25. At this yeah, age. not even. I'm like 24. Yeah, 24. I'm 24. Okay. So like, it's like things are happening really fast. Alhamdulillah, it's great. But yeah. I'm also realizing like I'm not as interested. I'm not as hungry as I was two years ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. the way I was because cl- the money is not climbing. motivating. You it's anymore. not motivating yeah. anymore, and I'm just not happy. And I, you know, I just wanted to like have a different change. I wanted to go back home yeah i was feeling lonely i wanted to go back home but i I feel like the the choice in career that you chose after that like starting your own business starting you know your like restaurant journey i didn't think that was gonna happen i had no plans like you you just wanted to have no job like as soon as i turned 25 i just submitted it i was like hey i'm i'm out of here i'm out of here wow no plans at all okay all i know is i was praying to allah and i was like I need to make sure the next 25 years that's coming ahead will be the best version of myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, again, there's a lot of flaws and insecurities within myself that I was just sweeping underneath the rug yeah. that I wasn't facing head on. Yeah. And me quitting the job was the first act mm-hmm. in practicing this new mentality of taking risk mm-hmm. and knowing that whatever whatever life brings to my way yeah. i have it within myself to overcome to it. fix it yeah and because again i'm a very calculated person i yeah. calculate everything i don't take zero risk mm-hmm. I, I take zero risk again and that's just because i'm the oldest of yep. my family and you know i bear a lot of financial burdens yeah. and i you just can't afford to fail i can't or take exactly risk, yeah. so i just never thought i could have that like privilege of doing what i want to do and yeah. um 25 was like you know what you are gonna figure out what you want to do or whatever comes your way but you're gonna be okay and you just need to practice that you're gonna be okay Mm -hmm. in the hopes of boosting my confidence in the hopes of addressing my flaws and insecurities and in the hopes of finding what new chapter lies ahead and Mm -hmm. that really was it i lied to my parents and told them that i am quitting so i can go back to school and get an mba from columbia Mm -hmm. i told them i was going to get an mba from columbia ivy league so they could just be off my back be good yeah and in between like i was just doing all these shenanigans Mm -hmm. and one thing led to another which led to you know I, i i was like reading one of your first statements that you put up with the monkey king and you were talking about how much you know your parents sacrificed to come to this country and just like come to a foreign land and just like have kids and start a life here 
and how you want to start this restaurant and this new journey and pay homage to them. But also it's up to us as children of immigrants to like pay that respect by doing what we want to do now you know like it's they sacrifice everything for us to like have this beautiful life now yeah you know our parents came here to um to survive yeah right but we are blessed with the opportunity to not have to survive but we get to live so it's only right that we live with intention of what we're trying to do Mm -hmm. and that's why i say with the monkey king like it's the indirect responsibility not be a voice for the generation but to amplify the generation's voice because Mm -hmm. Our parents, their mentality is you can't blame them. Yeah. You can't blame them. They never got to be selfless. They yeah. never knew about self care, self love, self fulfillment. They don't get they don't know any of that. Yeah. Those are all foreign, you know, terminology to mm-hmm. that. And we we understand the importance of these because we get to we're we're in a unique space where we get to, you know, dive deeper into what is it that our heart desire? What is it like to take care of ourselves? Our parents have been selfless their whole life. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're trying to talk about, hey, mom and dad, I want to do this because this is my dream or this is my love. Like they had many dreams of their yeah. own. How many of those They're like, get they over get it. over? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So it's on us to break that narrative and show them that like, listen, well, you can follow your dreams. You can be successful. Everything in life is hard, whether you become an engineer or an artist or a chef. But what matters is that you put in the time, you put in the work, and you mm-hmm. just do things from the heart. Mm-hmm. And there's no way you can't. You know, it's crazy. Our parents would, and when we were younger, would be like, you can do whatever mm-hmm. and you'll grow. And then somehow that advice changes, changes. over time. And it's mm-hmm. like, what? You told me that yeah, I could do whatever and I'll yeah. be successful. What is it? If you fail one time, try, try again, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yep. Like your parents, our parents gave us all these like advice. Yeah. And it's just, I think it's so weird that like as we grow up, those advice don't yeah, hold anymore. It doesn't hold, yeah. Because it be- it becomes like survival mindset. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think because exactly. like when, when they're kids, they're, when they were kids, they're probably told the same stuff. And then when they grow up, they, you know, are reminded by the others that they got duties and responsibilities and stuff. And, you know, like mm-hmm. we all go through, t- we all go through um, troubling times with like our parents. Like I have, you have, I'm sure that you went through like probably like the hardest times, like with your parents. Um, what, what were you doing in those times? Like, and what would you advise someone who's like going through like those real like deep waters with their parents like is it is it just like get some separation is it like try to like walk them through what you're doing is it just like return to it a year later when like things Mm -hmm. die down like what what is going on in your head when you're going through like those really tough times yeah because i was was stalking you and i saw that you made a post in in 2021 where you talked about you turning 27 Uh and you were like oh these are kind of the, the like reflections that i've had in the past few months and you know this is where i'm at in life right now and you had something in your caption and it said my relationship with my parents is at all time lo- is at an all-time low and they cannot accept the choices i've made thus far i realize that i can't be the daughter they want without compromising my dreams and goals i've always been the type to put my parents needs first so accepting our relationships dynamic has been a tough pill for me to swallow and i feel like like you've grown so much since then and like your relationship with your parents have has grown so much yeah. since then and I feel like a lot of people, if they are going through that, they're like, oh, my God, this is going to be the end all be all. You know, like I'm always going to be in this spot in my life. Yeah, I mean, sorry. No, it's okay. Parents are such a sensitive topic. Yeah. Like, I love my parents. And like many of us, we love our parents. And like when we start this journey of doing something for ourselves, unfortunately, you know, I think everyone's journey is different. And it really depends on their parents' mentality. Yeah. But for the majority that have probably will face what i face it's you know when the beginning like i i don't know how to like advise anyone on this Mm -hmm. because you're just you know what helped me somebody told me like a very successful entrepreneur was like yo this this is it's a it's a it's a cycle that happens and a lot of us go through it but you'll overcome it the first stage is denial yeah when you first tell your parents what you want to do there's anger and denial yeah that like that phase one is just them and you, you guys are gonna argue. Yeah. Your relationship is gonna be at all times low, and yeah. they're just you guys are not gonna find like figure it out because yeah. our parents have an idea of like you're my kids, you're gonna do what I tell you to do, yeah. right. and if you defy that, then like it's like we're gonna disown you or yeah. this, right? It's like that negative mentality. So you're gonna, it's natural to go through that phase. Yeah. Then it's phase two where it's like there's the silence. Yeah. There's like. Af- and again, you don't know how long each phase lasts, but just know that it happens in four phases. Yeah. So the first phase is anger and denial. Second phase is silence where they're just mad. Yeah. 
they're just mad and they're just giving you the slack. Like at everything, like anything yeah. you say, like they're they're yeah. just like like I remember while I was still living with my parents, like there was like what maybe like almost like a year I want to say that my parents did not speak to me just mm-hmm. because they were just disappointed in my choices of yeah. everything, and they felt like by not speaking to me, I would come around. Yeah, yeah. which unfortunately like didn't that never happen, works. You know, like that, it yeah. doesn't work because it it it. it, it it builds a lot more anger and resentment because like life yeah. is already hard. What I'm trying to do is already hard. I'm navigating You're not this getting the support. world. Yeah. And like more than anything, what would make mean the world to me is having my parents support just for that ease of comfort. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's just stressful or n- enough. Yeah. I don't need that extra, like that emotional manipulation, yeah. the emotional guilt. It's gaslighting. Like, yeah. It's just a whole nother level that you just don't need. And that's, I think when you read that, that was, that's where you are yeah because like my parents were you know like guilt tripping and i just felt bad because i've always done everything for my family just being the oldest i've done everything within with the thought of my family first so i'm like juggling this new mentality where i'm trying to pick myself i'm trying to pick myself and harvey's like yo you can't help your family if you can't help yourself first you gotta fill your own cup first yeah and he uses like when you're on the airplane and they tell you like the oxygen level is low and then the mask drops they tell you what they say put the mask on yourself first before you help anybody else yeah and he used that analogy on me and i was like you know what like i remember that and i was like you know i just really need i can't help my family if i can't help myself first yeah so that's when i like was like you know what despite how things are I'm still going to push through and eventually they will come along because that's that's what phase three is. Phase three, time has gone by. They're noticing that you're not changing up on what you're doing. Acceptance. And your parents love you at the end of the day. So that distance and absence really makes the heart fonder. Yeah. And they slowly start coming around. You know, yeah. they slowly in their little ways will start talking. Mm-hmm. They're not fully for it, but they start coming around. Yeah. And then. Then you got phase four where it's like, it's like, all right, they've been doing this for this long, clearly haven't come around, Mm -hmm. like no choice but to accept it. Yeah, exactly. So when this entrepreneur broke it down in these four phases, I realized I was already on the second phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that gave me hope. And they're they're like, don't worry. Like, and they were Bengali too. And they're like, our parents came around. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. And and the key is for you to stay on your path too. It's like, if you switch up, it's like, it just makes you start all over again. It's it's your responsibility to show your parents that you can make it work. And honestly, you just have to, for every 1% that you give in, like for every 100% you give in to try to convince and change their mentality, you have to understand that you're only getting to get 1% of growth back. Yeah. yeah. Because you're finding a mentality that's been, what, 60 years in the making? Mm-hmm. Like, think about us, how hard it is to give up a bad habit. Of course, yeah. You know? And this is them for, like, 60 plus years. Yeah. So, like, why would you think overnight you're going to get them to change their ways? And my my brothers were always like, they're not going to change. They're not going to change. But it's like, they're not going to change unless you put in that work to help them change. Mm-hmm. Right. And you have to understand, every 100% you put in, you're only going to get 1%. But look at us now, five years later, that 1% has accumulated to 5% worth of change. Damn. Mm-hmm. And if it means now I can sit at the table with my significant yeah. other and my parents and do what i'm doing like yeah they don't still stop complaining oh yeah you know? they're gonna stay complaining but, you know yeah and, and you got you gotta remember like it's 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 work like it's actual work it's, it's not like work. can't do it for a day can't do it for a week you gotta stay on like the path that you know you know is right for you and yeah you know as long as you stick to it like things will work and it's out so crazy because like you made that post when you were 27 and now you're 30 so it's been like three years and there's been so much like little wins in between but i feel like when you are going through it you don't see it as much because you're like, oh my God, I wish they were like 100% perfect, right? Yeah. But yeah. now, three years later, you're looking back at that past you and that past relationship and you're like, wow, like there has been so much growth and I'm so glad that I stuck through with it. But I feel like if anyone is going through that process right now and they're in like stage two or three and they don't see like the the end, like light, it just seems so far away. But when it does come, you're just like, yeah. wow. Like, I'm But it's so only going to come again, depending on what you put in. Because I, yeah. I had to have difficult conversations with my parents that I'm not even comfortable with. Yeah. So you have to, like, if you're not, if you're not putting yourself in uncomfortable position, you're not going to get those changes. That you're, the light is not going to come anytime yeah. sooner. Like, I had to, like, on my mom's birthday, I took my whole family and sat them down. We did, like, a group in- intervention. Mm-hmm. And we spoke for five, six hours. Mm-hmm. Like, my brothers were crying. 
I was crying. That's my so parents were crying. That it's yeah, so that's, uncomfortable. Like man. our parents don't do therapy and yeah. shit. So man. I was like, you know, we're not gonna go to a therapist. So it's on me to like be the mediator, moderator, mm -hmm. and you know push this conversation yeah. and yeah my my brothers um you know unraveled their trauma i did mine i talked about how like my parents always you know treating my brothers better than me created yeah. like animosity between me and my siblings because yeah. it was like i'm doing all the right things like but they competition get, you know yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm as a female i'm getting the great i'm getting the all the a's and i'm i'm doing everything i'm supposed to do yeah but then my brothers get to stay out late yeah and you know fuck up yeah. on school and shit and it's like now i'm taking my anger that i have for my parents on them mm -hmm. so yeah we had yeah. all this conversation and you know it wasn't easy for my parents to hear all that but yeah. it was needed because um you know after that like everything was on the table yeah and it's even those things like we don't say i love yous we don't hug yeah we don't cry in front of our parents we don't show emotions but i knew if i needed my parents to understand what i was why i was doing what i was doing i needed to break a barrier of discomfort mm -hmm. and be uncomfortable with them mm -hmm. and yeah like now yeah. like like my I don't know if your parents do it, but like they don't really hug. They yeah. do like the side, side, hug. yeah, yeah, like a side now, pat or a hug. Yeah, yeah, like, bring it in. Like, I need that. Like, my dad, like we're face. I'm like, I love you, dad. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I love you, dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love you back. He's like, okay, I love you, daughter. Aww. Like you know, like Aww. we can't be like yes, that's how our parents were, but like we need to change, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so excited for the next generation, like our kids. Yeah. You know, us knowing everything that we know now. Yeah. Yo, when I, my kid says like I want to be this. I don't give a fuck what you want to be. Yeah. I'm just going to support you to the fullest because yeah. I think having your parents support just gives you that's that everything. level of confidence and boost mm -hmm. that makes you feel like you could do anything and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if, you know, I want to be able to give that to my kids and see what greatness comes out you of You feel them. so powerful when you Man. have your parents support. Like yeah. we always yeah. talk about that. We're always like, damn, if we from the beginning had our parents support in like whatever endeavor that we had. I like I don't even know how far we'd be or like how different our situation. Our lives would, be, would have been different, you know? but again, um, our I mean, everything journey, happened to a reason. Exactly, yeah. and um, I think over time, I think even now, like I I don't think I have hundred percent my parents' support yet. Yeah, but they're slowly coming around. Yeah, and I think when things really. I think when Monkey King and myself reach the truest potential, yeah. I think that's when my parents will see. Cause that's Inshallah. Where, inshallah. Yeah, that's inshallah. where, you know, everything, like, at the end of the day, all our parents want is us to live a better life yeah. than they lived. Be happy yeah. at peace. But they don't realize that everything in life is hard. So you yeah. will always struggle. What matter is that at least you struggle at the things that you care about. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the part that you just got to bridge to them. Man, yeah, that was beautiful. No, like, everything you said, she, actually, thank I'm you. I'm telling you, she like, always speaks wisdom. Like, yeah, she's a little good with podcast it. aside, like that. Yeah. That was very beautiful. Yeah, it's so funny because like sometimes, like, like I remember I was on Facetime with you once and. You were just so stressed that day and she was just like violently doing her skincare routine like on camera <laughs> yeah. where it looked like she was like, like ripping her face like, apart. Like this. I, like, I was like, what are you going through? Like you are yeah. doing something wrong She's because she was like putting Yo, the skin stuff dying. deep. She, she was like, why are you doing this? I was like, are like, you at peace right now? I'm like, yo like i just have so much to do and i gotta move really quickly like <laughs> but like, then here you yeah, are spinning your wisdom and stuff i was like but there's you know, that side of you, you know, it's so funny because when i drove over here today yeah. i was thinking about the last time i drove over yeah. and like how much of a hot mess i was yeah <laughs> she'd bring back we all memories put, like the pennies into like yeah, the yeah. machine yeah. this time i made sure i came with all my quarters he's ready i was prepared just in, case. You just in case because you just in case you were like Yo, she would kept on being like, sis, what's good with you? Like, you okay? And I'm Bro, nah, I, no. I remember I got into her car and like, this is TMI, but like, you're fine with it. She was just like crying in the car. I'm like, girl, are you yeah, okay? And oh. she, was, she was like on the phone crying and I'm like, are you, yeah. you we need to go home there. and sit down first before like I've we start there. our day. It's okay. I felt, and then we got right into work, but yeah, I was yeah. like, God damn. Bro. Like, we don't got time. We got to go right into I work. Know. Let's keep going. But that, that's why like, we'll get into it later. But I feel like now since we've kind of laid down the groundwork and the foundation of your business and like who we are as individuals, like it's time to like get back to our roots and like actually have that self care and like, just like feel good about our, like have a sustainable life, you know, because like hustle culture is not going to last forever for us. You know, like we cannot work day and day, like out night every single day because I've tried that. We've all tried that. Burn and it's, you burn yourself out. You're not passionate about anything anymore. And it's like, you're just like, why am I even doing this? You know? So you we'll, realize you get into yeah. another cycle that you were just avoiding from their last cycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. It's like, what's the point of me transitioning from 
this you know job that was paying me so well into my actual passion if I'm going to be working like 24 hours but before we get into that um something that you did mention was that like um hopefully in the next are you hungry what was that uh, your stomach I, I don't know what that was what like i'm not even hungry yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. i think your stomach and my stomach are communicating that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that we're, a little telepathy we're, right we're synchronized there. we're like we sorry, want more kebabs God sorry guys just, like they're they're sitting right there like i still <laughs> smell anyways so anyways go ahead there. go ahead but um you were saying hopefully in the next generation we will be better parents and we will support our kids dreams and their endeavors right but I think something that our parents didn't have in this generation was just, like, the positive Bangladeshi representation of, like, okay, I see, you know, there's a Shah Rukh Khan. So maybe, like, an Indian person can be, like, oh, we have Shah Rukh Khan. Maybe my kid can be the next Shah Rukh Khan, right? But we didn't necessarily have the specific, like, Bangladeshi American entrepreneurs None. and, like, the creatives where Zero. they had, like, a reference point for their kid, you know? But I feel like now since there's we so are growing, many. yeah, there's so many. We're growing in the generation where there's, like, everyone everywhere, right? And we have you, we have, you know, us as artists and things like that. But something that I love, especially with your business, is that, like, you're always making room at the table for Bangladeshi. Like, South Asian, yeah, but specifically Bangladeshi creatives and small business owners. Like, within your food, like, your main reason was to combine so many different Asian cuisines. Like, your partner being Chinese, you being Bangladeshi, and combining that in New York. But also, with your space, you're giving back to, like, you know small business owners like you let me do my artwork for the Bangladesh new year i'm trying to have thing. you do a gallery girl that's oh, what i'm saying literally oh, before i have you do a fashion it's like that. she even like had a restaurant like when i first met you oh, yeah. you were like girl i need your art on the walls i was like first of all who are you that's what i'm saying funny. i literally pitched this idea of a bengali new year yeah around her artwork because yeah for me it's like when i see talent like I don't know. I don't know. I, I I was just telling Harvey this. When I was young, I always people call me Mixie Munzee, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm just so like I can connect with any different group. I'm I'm a chatterbox. I mm-hmm. love being friendly. I love just mingling, right? Mm-hmm. And I always was that one friend that had different friend group. While yeah. my main core friends, they would always like to stick to their crew and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. where I, I wasn't afraid to like venture out and be friendly with outside people. Mm-hmm. And one thing of me I've always noticed was that I'm the glue. I'm like the connector. Mm. I know so many people and I always connect and put them together. Yeah. And there's some, I was just telling Harvey this, um, you know, there's a lot of people that they will be like, oh, you know, for example, your birthday, right? Mm -hmm. You have your birthdays coming up, but you have different friends group and it's like, oh, I have different friends group, but I can't put them together because they're not going to mingle. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yo, fuck that. Like I'm putting all my group of friends together because the one common denominator is you. Yeah. So if you and I are creating a friendship, that means that our personality are matching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means then all my other friends, you guys should get along perfectly fine. Right. Because we're all operating on a similar Mm -hmm. energy and frequency. Mm -hmm. So like I never understood. Damn, I feel like that's a hot take. I never understood why people just want to keep their friends group separate and be like, oh yeah, they don't they won't mesh. If they're not meshing then I'm kind of looking at you sideways. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they should match. Yeah. You know, they're all the same. Like you you are a representation of the people you keep around. Oh, you. yeah, right. of course. Right. Of course. So then by theory, like everyone else should. I'm not saying besties, but yeah. you should be able to like, be able to have a conversation. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, know, yeah. Have a good time. So, yeah, I always knew that I was a glue. Yeah. Right? But I never knew how I could monetize that or make a career. out Yeah. Of that. I think it's only now in my 30s that sense. I'm realizing like, yo, my job was always just to put people in a position in a of room, the same, power yeah. and opportunity. Like, that's always what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So, like, even, like, not realizing five years ago when I saw you and your talents, I was like, this girl is so talented. Like, we need to put her up. Mm-hmm. We need to showcase her artwork and everything. Mm-hmm. Like, just, that's just, like, what I want to do. I want to put people in the position of you know getting exposure opportunities and just power but like more importantly i want to do that for my own community because i think me i'm i'm in a privileged partnership where i get to experience another community through my partner's lens and him being chinese you know i get to sit in with the chinese community and the api community and i get to see how they're moving the deals that they're doing the the strength of the community coming together and then i 
turn to the, this side and I'm looking at my community and I see we have a long way to go. And um, sometimes I'm at these tables where I don't see any anybody that's like me yeah. on these tables. Yeah. So I understand early on, I understood that with my space, I have a power to uplift my community in New York City and that I only can win if my community wins. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's always been my that's why like I go as hard as I do to give spotlight to the Bangladeshi and Bengali community. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like we're a minority community that have the numbers here in New York City. Yeah. And I've said it many times. How are we one of the most populated group of people in New York City, but the spotlight on us is barely there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Barely. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's coming. And uh, exactly. It, yeah. yeah, I feel like our culture exactly. is coming. We are in this era of cultures that on the come up. And yeah. like, you know, you see so many minority cuisines, culture getting represented, whether it's like afro afro music afro mm -hmm. music right you mm -hmm. see um latin you see so many different cultures coming up mm -hmm. and it's like this is the opportunity for us to come up as well yeah but we need to come together as a community mm -hmm. yeah. and that's where i look at the merging leaders in mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be in my industry mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're a chef or a restaurateur or artist at the end of the day we're all bengalis breaking barriers yeah and we're all going against the grain mm -hmm. and if we all just band together and when we have opportunities at the table like you know look to your left look to the right these are the people you want to yeah. work with yeah but i feel like i feel like brown people got like that that crabs in the bucket mindset yeah like, i mean we're know. all still coming out of it and i i think that's why like like you said it's coming mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. in the next two three years mm -hmm. it'll be more prevalent but like yeah. right now like we still have a lot of work to do yeah i think when when you see when you don't see a lot of opportunity or don't see a lot of room at the table it's very like you know people are trying to like drag each other down maybe not like so much our generation like previous generation but everything no, was super definitely competitive there's a little there's, bit of there's that definitely. scarcity mentality yeah yeah, there's yeah. Still a little definitely bit. Here. you could tell who's really for the community and who's not yeah. you yeah. know so there's still some of them but oh, again know. That, that's why i say right. like when you find the real ones you connect and you gravitate that's why yeah. like i'm very like as i'm going through this journey and i'm getting to have the opportunity to meet so many other people i'm gravitating the ones that really resonate with my story and that i can connect with and that's mm -hmm. why like i was so excited because i've said it from the very beginning i, I always say it to her i'm like you're one of the realest i've met mm -hmm. you know you're one of the Girl, realest, you too. that's a fact authentic like right off the bat like there's no hidden agendas yeah notice with you you're just at the core just pure yeah. kindness and like i really appreciate that and yeah. i love like i be, i mean i'm not on the gram as much but like yo i love when i'm seeing you win because i'm just like yes like if there's anyone that deserves it more than anybody it's you you i love that you can, you can feel that like you can't really see it online like you yeah. can see but like in person like when you talk to somebody a little bit you could tell like who's like who's genuine bro like yeah. who's like honest about like where they come from and like you know what they're trying to represent yeah. and you could tell people that do it for like the wrong reasons or for a reason that doesn't even belong to them you know yeah. like they got it from somebody else but yeah. it's, like, i see a younger version of myself in you but a better version of myself yeah. in Damn. you know because what you like you're a bit younger than me mm -hmm. but like the levels that you're touching like i'm so happy because I, I like i'm so happy because yeah. i wish if i were to have that like i would be in a whole nother, different stage right yeah. but again everyone has different journeys and they have it's for their own reasons but that's like now now we have people like you to look up to you know like five it's six funny, years ago I look you did to you no, girl oh, it's, so, it it's mutual I like a, so, but it's so you know, cute because i remember from my birthday yeah. last year like she sent me that. such a good text she sent me like this long ass thing and she was just like girl it might be like you know scary at this age because like 25 is like in your mid-20s but once you hit your 30s you're gonna hit like that confident era and you're also killing it already in the game so yeah, we don't i was even just know. like yo keep up this like, yeah what you're doing is already yeah. like what you're doing right now at your 25 yeah is what i'm just starting to do at 30 yeah. so if you keep it up yo by five years from now yo you're gonna be on a whole mother i needed level. to hear that like, bro. i see you at like with the millions like, no I'm i love it millions. M, i when love you, it when we went to we that go samson um event you were like oh my favorite youtuber yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. May fam? my fam yeah, my yeah yeah so i didn't know who she was yeah but then i looked into her and once we connect i was like oh shit she's big yeah well, i see that for you right i see that for you <laughs> i do too i love you know? it oh, no, that's that's new collection like, soon no new collection <laughs> coming out yeah, soon yeah. it's right there <laughs> new collection out soon that's why i said yo mahua keep going keep going like if you feel like you're good go for another five years because you're by 
30, you are going to be on that level. Damn. And I see it. Girl, I love you. I love you. You heard, that. You. Yeah. You heard but, that. Girl, this is your guess. I'm like, I'm like gassed up. I'm like, hee hee, yeah. I'm the guest. But I remember like. You got to give their flowers, yo. Right. Yeah, you always you don't give me too many followers. But um, I remember when I first ate at the Monkey King. First of all, the food is delicious. Like you guys, yeah, yeah. Can we talk about food already? Like it's like we're hour I mean, into the podcast. It's time. Even, it's time. You haven't even gone what's there up? yet. What's so up, Monkey you can't King? Even... Yeah, why? Like what's up? Like why yeah, I gotta I take been you. So far? But anyway, the food is yeah. amazing. But on top of the hospitality, is, is like crazy. Like you guys go above and beyond yeah, and make you feel people. like welcome, even if like you don't really know the person, and it's very like family oriented, which reminds me very much of like Asian culture, right? But anyway, on top of that, I remember you were saying to me and then Cynthia also when she came in that, you know, the community is what brought you here, right? Especially during the pandemic when you guys started the business, like you guys, it was hard, you know, and you had to get money from the community to help bring you back to surface. And also the Bangladeshi people, they're the ones that like supported you and like the Brooklyn community, like, everyone in that community supported you. So like, who are you to not give that space back to them, you yeah. know? And it's so rare, I feel like, to have that mindset because when you are in a, a business or like a restaurant, whatever it is, you're like, okay, how can I monetize off of my community to get up higher? Which is okay. It's a survival mindset. You obviously have to make money. But in a good way. But, yeah. but your mindset is kind of like, how could I give that back to them and like help with my resources and help with my success and give them that platform you know yeah i've always which been I like love. you can't really monetize on the community you just need the community's coastline yeah you mm. monetize on the brands that got the budget mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so the big it, boys yeah like it's a, but uh, like you know like you said like opening a restaurant in new york city is hard enough yeah doing it for the first time is even harder and then doing it in the midst of a global pandemic that's different is a whole nother shit show that imagine. nobody saw coming, yeah. right? So when we didn't have the support of our family and some of our friends and people were just looking at us sideways like, you're crazy. You want to go into the industry that's impacted the most and you've never done this before and you want us to co-sign you? Yeah, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. It was the community that believed in us. Yeah. It was the community's belief in us that got us through some of our darkest times. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and that's why I say now that we're blessed to have our own space, like we wouldn't have been here without the community supporting yeah. us. So who are we to not give the space back to the next set of entrepreneurs and yeah. creative, just like how they were a support system for us. Yeah. We hope that Monkey King as a platform can be a support system for those individuals that are truly about their craft yeah. Yeah. and is brave enough to persevere and make it mm -hmm. we just want to make that journey a bit easier for you because mm -hmm. there are those individuals that made it a little bit easier for mm -hmm. us by supporting us and connecting mm -hmm. us and we're you know like you said the hospitality area because food is a love language food oh yeah of course is how immigrant families connect with each other is how we show love right so our space is not just another restaurant it's our home our guest is our extended family and mm -hmm. we're just practicing the same hospitality that our parents are doing it. I always say, like, I mean, this might be biased, but, like, there's no hospitality like the Bengali hospitality. On God. Of course. On God. We wear our heart on our sleeves. Yeah. Like, it's funny because that the, the dinner that we had the other night, my mom was, like, pushing out, like, the fine china, like, plates. Oh, yeah. yeah that's I'm like, bro, Harvey has dined with us so many times. Like, <laughs> what are you bringing these fancy glasses yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, like, the that art of changes. hosting. It's yeah. the art of hosting. We always... We don't care if we're tired or we got to wash extra dishes and stuff. What we care about that is a guest is coming into our home and it's our responsibility to take care of them. That's you are fact. in our hands for the rest of the night. Let us cultivate the experience for you. That's a fact. Isn't it always so impressive when like our moms mostly they're like, oh yeah, there's no food at home and there are guests coming and then out of nowhere they're they able just, to Out just, of nowhere? Where do you have, get that? With no, like multiple dishes. I have where the hell become my from? mom. Okay, don't you hate it when you tell your mom you don't want any more food and they're just like of course, adding more? Yeah, yeah. I'm doing that at the to my guests. Yeah. Oh, you, girl, like, you do that all the time. I walk around and I'll talk to the tables i'm like how is this and i'll be like here have some more they're like oh i'm like enjoy it. and i'm like and then i'm like wait i'm becoming my mom i need to pull back no like, i love it like when when i cook for myself i'll always like give myself the smallest portion so yes like, like, make the make the meal last as long yeah. as possible but like she's had a like we've hosted a couple dinner parties but she invited like six or seven of her friends and i literally go all out i cook six hours straight just for everybody and yeah you know if everybody's having a good time i'm like and, yeah and again, I remember, such a bungly I remember, thing i remember my first time hosting I, I had an apartment in orlando i hosted for like four people and i had the 
greatest fucking time of my life. Listen, you, you don't got to so brag. Cool. I already invited you over for <laughs> I know. Like, you, you just showing like, up. Like, no, I'm just, listen, we're like, going to schedule just, like, this on the calendar really like, right now. I just really like, like this cooking thing. That's all. No, yeah. I really have a good time. Like, I love, like, burgers, fries, like, all that. Like, I, <laughs> I, yeah, it. I need to come to Monkey King already. No, actually, you yeah. really do. No, you guys need to come to my home. It's not too oh. home. Yeah, <laughs> girl, she got the yeah. exposed come to brick. Monkey King to eat. Come okay. to my house. To we would love that. Chill. She got the right. exposed brick and everything. I like the apartment, railway like apartment. That. But anyway, yeah, we'll you start. so you start off with your cooking journey. Like you're a chef at heart. Like you love con- like concocting different meals, concocting. right? Do you feel like that kind of went away when you started your own restaurant? And do you feel like it's coming back now? I think so, yes. Because again, like when we opened this restaurant, nothing went to nothing went as planned. People think like this restaurant came out of like years and years of planning. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, like we didn't know we were going to have a restaurant this like so soon. We just found a space that we love so much. And we were like, you know what? I see it. Like I see it could be big. And especially with Bushwick, a neighborhood on the come up, there was just a lot of opportunities for us to be as early settlers mm-hmm. to just go in and take advantage. So, you know, things happen really fast. And then when the pandemic happened, it really just like put a pause on everything and made us question everything. It was like, are we still going to do this? Like, can we really do this? So it just really messed up our whole game plan. So people don't understand that we paid rent for almost three years with no business. Mm -hmm. We didn't get any support from the government because you need to have one years of like sales revenue to show for like PPE Mm -hmm. loans and stuff. And we didn't have any investors or anything outside forces. So a lot of it was just us like, looking at grants, looking at partnerships, looking at things to survive. Mm -hmm. And um, when we finally did, I created a GoFundMe and through the community support, we were able to finish construction in our kitchen. So when that happened, we were like, okay, we need to like make something. So we just started doing delivery. Yeah, and, I remember the era. Yeah, and even till this, uh, you know, a good portion of our menu is still off our delivery menu because at that time you had to think about quality and logistic. And it was like, how many people order from a restaurant that they never dined at? Yeah. Very little. So our odds are already against us. On top of that, we have to make food. So we really, we had just so many fires as two individuals. So we tapped into um, Harvey's father, who is an executive chef, who has a history of owning multiple restaurants and being successful. So we tapped into him as one of our biggest resource. And he helped us like get through that time. So a lot of our dishes are rooted in a lot of harvey's father's cooking Mm -hmm. because again they carried out well certain something like our duck fat fried rice which is one of our signature fried rices right Mm -hmm. that came out of our desire for our love for duck fat fries Mm -hmm. but fries Mm -hmm. don't carry well yeah so a lot of things that came onto our menu just ended up being a survival thing yeah so at that time when i had all my recipes like i said before cooking at home and cooking at a restaurant for a mass reproduction is too different. Yeah. Too different. I realized like I still had a lot more I needed to learn. I needed to find like my set of vendors that I was going to get spices. Because how many times can I just drive out to Jackson Heights to get all my spices? <laughs> yeah, from like, Brooklyn. That's not sustainable. <laughs> right. You yeah. know? So I realized, And you're doing it all yourself too. And I also realized we have so many other fires. Like you, you just got to like divide and conquer. So yeah. at that point, like, yeah, I felt some type of way that I couldn't push out my food onto the menu. But I also realized like it wasn't my time yet yeah like i still like i rather do it properly than rush it and mm-hmm. then have it be mediocre mm-hmm. yeah. so that's where you know um i moved towards the front of house that's where my strengths were i've mm-hmm. always oversee front of house i've worked i started as a host and you know worked my way up managed a michelin restaurant right before so mm-hmm. at Damn. that time Just like you that. know uh, as the restaurant was starting to get some headway and construction in the dining room was like almost finished i had a whole new set of problems was like okay Munzi, you need to start creating a team you need to f- and like again we're doing all this from scratch so we got to create the roles we got to be the hr person we got to yeah. do the interviews we got to create the training program Man. all this is taking time at the same time i'm doing that i'm also creating the brand presence online right i don't know it's social you. media oh so i'm teaching God. myself social media instagram trying to attack you know tiktok so at that point, it's like, yo, the kitchen is kind of like running and it's doing OK. We mm-hmm. have other fires that we need to put out. So, yeah, that's that just went into like the past year and a half where, you know, 
I'm happy that you say like the food is great, the service and the hospitality is great. Yeah. Because at that point, like when those doors open and the public is coming in, there's a whole nother level of pressure. Yeah. You yeah. gotta make sure your team knows how to take care of the guests. You gotta mm -hmm. make sure food is good. So yeah, all that took my time away from the kitchen and now, as things are stabling a little bit and my team has been with us from the very beginning, there I'm starting to see the next level of leaders that are going to take over. Because mm -hmm. Monkey King should never be Munzi or Harvey. Yeah. Right. Monkey King is the team and the individuals that are within our space that contribute to your experience. Mm -hmm. We never wanted our brand to just be tied to two yeah. people. It's but not about do you, us. Do you feel like it's hard to let go of that control, though? Because it is like your baby, you know? In the beginning, yes. Yeah. Because that was because we did not have our infrastructure is yeah. solidified yeah like we knew what we put out but we knew it wasn't rock hard mm -hmm. solid which is now the time that i said we're taking that step back right now yeah. kind of being quiet not doing any activation or anything yeah because we're really talking about expansion yeah we're at a point where monkey king is starting to get out there the floodgates mm -hmm. are leaking and we need to expand our space mm -hmm. so we are moving into bar seating now we're gonna do our outdoor seating yes all sir. that Let's is go expansion i need Let's more go. people on my team both in the front and in the back mm -hmm. so there's a whole and what people don't realize with restaurants is everything is interconnected you can't change one part without changing all the other structures mm -hmm. yeah. so we really are doing a full dive of creating a whole new blueprint of how we want to run our business for the next five years so that. with that being said Man. i'm trying to buy my time back and that's where you see me cooking more at home right now because i'm doing more recipe development at home yeah. and behind the scenes while i'm cooking at home i'm also thinking of how am i gonna translate this over to the restaurant mm -hmm. that knowledge i didn't have in the beginning when mm -hmm. i was opening the restaurant and i think everything happens for a reason and it's okay that like you don't see as much of the Bengali side yeah. because but you're doing it in other ways too. Yeah, you're doing it in other ways, and I think when when the Bengali side does come out, I think it'll it'll come out in a perfect time where people already know about Monkey King yeah. and we're about to go on another level. Yeah. So again, things happen for a reason, and I was yeah. really upset for the longest that I couldn't push out my stuff. Yeah. But I also understand that that delay was for me to better better you know better myself in my craft my mm -hmm. skills and come back stronger mm -hmm. i think just something i want to know is like you know you talking about all like the restaurant stuff and how stressful it is how much pressure it is like we hear that but i think like i just want to say like you just sound there's like s still like a tone of like love and excitement like when you talk about yeah. it, it even is. though you could talk about like the most stressful things you could i like i can hear that like you still like in a way like, like love the pro like yeah. you found a find a way to like love the process, the process. and love yeah. like you know the the journey of like growing a business because like you know it's yours it's your baby and like at the end of the day like there are things gonna that are gonna be tough about it but like i can still hear like the excitement and yeah. i think i think like when i hear people talk about business it's really easy to get like to just get bored or like for you know they get super like nonchalant or like don't have any like charisma behind like what they're talking about but like when you talk about it like it makes me excited to like one day go or like one day like start a business or one day like do whatever and it's you have like this special tone it's because it. you're an artist at the end of the day all we're all artists yeah and what's the point right to create yeah so i think my interest despite all the other workload that we have like again when you're doing something you love it comes with all the other work that you don't want to do but you mm -hmm. have to do right yeah. but what gives you the excitement is at the end of the day, you get to create and you yeah. get to take these ideas that you have, whether they're cooking, their recipes, their events, their experiences, and you actually have the power and the control to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea that like at the end of the day, whatever ideas I have, I can actually make it happen. And yeah. it's all on me. Mm -hmm. So I think that ownership, that full creative ownership to do whatever you want in your own business, your own brand. Yeah. It's like, there's, it makes it exciting. It makes it exciting. It's like you're excited to see what you can create. Like the Bengali New Year's, that was five years in the yeah. weekend. Mm. And even then, like having like major sponsor pull out two days before, yep. we didn't really know how that was going to be, but everything worked it pulled, out. The community and, pulled through again. And it was, yeah. to this day, all our guests say that was the best party. Yep. And I'm excited for next year. Do you think like, like given your background um, in, you know, the yeah. Nanos, yeah, yeah um, do you think your passion has to be your career? Do you think like you have to be passionate about what you do as like a job or is like a job just a job at the end of the day yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. because even it's so funny you say that because harvey and i've been having like real 
serious conversation because again i got into this to cook yeah but if you look at it i haven't been able to cook mm -hmm. so what i'm doing is maintaining the business and trying to expand it to the next level mm -hmm. and i'm trying to find my little pockets of happiness mm -hmm. through the events mm -hmm. or supporting like my community but at the core i'm not doing what i intended to do yeah so now i'm getting to a point where like i'm just I'm in limbo and I had to like really be like, yo, I, I'm confused. I'm lost. Like, yeah. I know this is my space, but like what I really wanted to do, I haven't been able to do it. So that and that goes back to us going through this whole infrastructure of Blueprint, because right now. The way Harvey, you know, explained it and I agree, it's like we don't have the luxury to do what we want to do mm -hmm. yeah. right now. There's just too many fires for us to put out. And what's the point if we don't take care of the fires, like we won't even have a space to do what we want right, to do. So right. like you got to put that at the back pocket for a second yeah. and figure out what you need to. And right now is building up the team, making sure we can, ex uh, you know, be able to uh, withstand this new level of busyness. Because like we're turning down people on the weekends, we're getting booked out weeks and weeks in advance. So mm -hmm. like we're hitting a new level of um we're 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 on uncharted territory yeah. right now. Yeah. And we know what we've been doing for the last five years is not gonna help it's us get through yeah. this. It's not so we right need now. to like rebuild this new game plan. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, like I don't I like But I feel like this is like a long term investment. Like exactly. you, you putting so many hours into this because like you left your job, you're making a lot of money in your old engineering job and you're working sixty, eighty, whatever hours. But now also this type of self-employed running a business job is also like there's no end to it, right? Like you're working 24 hours sometimes and but it's something that you're passionate about. And yeah, it's not necessarily the exact route of like cooking or like being a chef exactly what you want to do because you're running a business. But you know, at the end of the day, it's going to get you to a point where you can eventually do that again. You and know, I think that's the entrepreneur mentality. Yeah. yeah. Things will work out yeah. in your favor. You just got to adapt and keep going. Mm -hmm. I haven't been paid. I mean, I we, we, we quit our jobs at 25. I'm 30 and Harvey's 32. Yeah. So we're we haven't seen a paycheck. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we're just surviving within the means of what we have. And. I would have never thought like three years ago when I first started, like I was in a fake it till you make it mentality. Yeah. I didn't think I could be an entrepreneur. I didn't think I was built for it. Yeah. I was just trying to ride the wave and see if I had it. And now coming in, I'm just like, wow, I survived these last five years. And like my biggest fear was money. But, yeah, you know, life have a way of working out for you yeah. yeah like if you trust the process and your attention and what you're doing like life the universe god like they'll figure it out yeah they'll yeah. figure a way to keep you on your journey and keep you pushing and mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's it's all about like fulfillment like self-fulfillment it's yeah. like you know if you're not the most passionate about what you're doing or you know if you're making a million dollars or ten dollars whatever it is like if you're feeling fulfilled like you will feel the ambition to like keep going keep and going. to keep growing yeah. mm -hmm. you know so it's america yeah. you gotta charge it to the yeah to the game. right mm -hmm. yeah All All right. Right. you ready you ready for the so <sighs> we end off our guest episodes with like little rapid fire yeah questions? oh shit okay let's so go. it's like on the spot whatever answer you think of you gotta say it like no thinking. Yeah, okay. like okay. no thinking. Like just gotta. So these are like to fun it. ones. Like these aren't like crazy ones. Right. You know, Drake or Kendrick. Hey, Drake. Damn, that's kind of crazy. Dang, that's kind of crazy. You're Kendrick, right? He deleted everything off his Instagram too. That's kind of crazy. Oh, Drake. Yeah, he deleted said, like every single. You said track. whatever first comes to your mind. I okay. heard the song. All right, all right. Then we actually deleted everything. I didn't know. Yeah, that. he he deleted like all of his posts about Kendrick. He's I'm like, I'm done. I'm out of here. It's okay. Y'all can cancel me. Yeah. All right. Permission. Favorite Bangli side dish. Side dish? Yeah. Yeah, like you got like you got doll, doll. Oh, okay. okay. You know, my, That's my mom, underrated. My mom's, my mom, so like in I'm from Some... I'm from Florida, right? So I have a lot of mango trees in my house, and my mom has been using like the the ripe mango because they you know they blossom. Yeah, blossom yeah. Make achar. Um, yeah. She's making a lot of amdal with like the ripe mangoes that like are like still green and not fully. You, you know, gotta so bring me some mangoes it. when you go yeah. back. Yeah, well, I'm going. My next mom week. loves yeah. the mangoes. Yeah. yeah. All right, you're a big thrifter, right? Yes. Favorite New York City thrift store. Damn, Damn. You're trying to make me say my because say it say my spot. Wait, so what is it? Beacon oh, okay. closet. She's a gatekeeper. She's, she's a, gatekeeper. a gatekeeper. She's a gatekeeper. She's a Brooklyn Sorry, gatekeeper. Guys. Crossroad, I am too. not cross. What? <laughs> Next question. Whatever. That is what a Never what mind. a shame. We're cutting that out. What <laughs> What's going on? All right, excellent. Dream destination. Back in our travel era. Oh. I love Greece. I've been there, but oh, you've I been love there. Greece. Yeah, Ooh. I love Greek mythology, so mm. I love like 
ancient infrastructure and uh, i still want to do greece again yeah. okay my mom, right. my mom used to be a flight attendant before she got married and she's been to greece four times Damn, and she great. still talks about athens like to this day she yeah. says it's her favorite she literally personal. brought it up the other day too. yeah it's just i don't just know i went to athens yeah. <laughs> i don't know I love, that's her icebreaker i don't have a vacation home, but i love like greek so i love like i don't know if you watch netflix right now 300s on like i have not rise no. of the empire uh-huh. okay so I just, like, is that what you're watching i gotta check yeah, that out yeah. i love anything yeah. that yeah. Has, like, Shout out Greece. To them, it's just right? chick-fil-a Greece documentary in that <laughs> yeah big Greek, big soup locky guy all right yeah ideal friday night like if you're off from work, you yeah. Got like no Friday night, you wake day. up, like a check just hit. Like what's up? Like what? What's the day? Like what? What are we I'm doing? I'm getting high, okay. And I'm just gonna have <laughs> this here. day of self care and do whatever I like. Like what's thing? Yeah. In? What's um, the self care? Getting high, go to Domino. Okay. <laughs> I love being by the park, by water and nature. Yeah. So I love going to Domino Park. Mm, that's a good love one. Thank you, guys. Music, reading, being high, and then having a nice meal, and then go go to bed before midnight. Yeah, mm, that's calm. my kind of night. Calm. My we don't gotta go. We don't gotta go party. We don't yeah. gotta turn up. Yeah, yeah. We're. I just like. I just like to. We're home buddies at heart. Yeah. You know? Be with the vibes. All right, last one. Biggest hot take. It doesn't have to be related to anything. Just hot take. Like you like want to hear her hot take? Yeah, I hated her hot take. Example. Her hot take was we, we walk we walk past the movie theater and she was like, you know, I don't think popcorn is the appropriate snack for a movie theater. Nachos is. She said like like chips or something. I was like I was like what? Like no, it's too crunchy. People next to you are gonna get pissed off. But it was a bad hot take because popcorn right, is like quiet. You know, you, whatever. So like hot take about anything. That was a bad one. You like, know what she got so mad at me about? Well, huh? Do you remember when I was telling you I used to not eat sauce? Oh like my I just God, got into bro. sauce recently. Like, what What's, wrong What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? Oh, I've never had these sauces. I'm like, girl, you need to have Chick Fil A sauce. So hot take. I don't think Chick Fil A is fast food. I think it's gourmet. <laughs> gourmet. She said gourmet. Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A. Hit us up or hit and her it's so up. Funny because we're talking to someone that owns like an actual like yeah. Michelin restaurant. I'm yeah. going Chick Fil A right after this. We girl. manifest in that collab. That no, monkey, literally. That monkey What's King your hot take? Huh. Um. Say it. Come on. Damn. Think of one on the spot. Um, um, I don't think like pancakes and waffles are breakfast food. I, like breakfast. I think they're. Oh, you don't like breakfast like at all? I don't like sweets, and most of the breakfast is. So like, you you think that's no, not breakfast food? Though. Like you don't like sweets like I, I at don't all. Like sweets. That's different. Yeah. So you don't think those? Are, no, I think they're dinner foods. What? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, that <laughs> when so, did you ever? Because they're like they're heavy, like they're heavy. Like you have like heavy, like unhealthy so is bacon, food, like egg the- and cheese. <laughs> yeah. But like at the end of the day, like bacon is just like, it's like a strip and like dinner. egg. It's so funny. No, you say, if you want, you say if- pancakes and waffles are dinner rather than dessert. Yeah. Why did you say dinner? Like, you want to take it back? Hot take. You want to take it back? Can I take my drink? I don't see the vision. Back. All right. Y'all not, y'all no, I feel like you can take it back. Like, think about it a little nah, bit. Let it rinse. Dinner. It's dinner. It's more dinner than breakfast. But I've also never seen you eat that for dinner. So why would you say that? <laughs> you know what? All right. Yeah, Yo, you guys are literally like Harvey and I. No, yeah. it's, it's just like, and it's so crazy. Well, I mean, we'll talk about yeah. it. So yeah. I would have loved to have it on. We just don't have more space. I know. Okay. <laughs> but also, it's also like, owning a business and like owning a brand with your partner is like a whole different level of something else like i mean a I mean, that's, that's some that's crazy. the strongest that's of the shoulders content you guys need to because i'm trying to see more <laughs> couples <laughs> and dominating. how they work in business and like communication so maybe that should be another like sector that you guys tap into damn mm. if you have guests do like couples because oh my god i feel like yo doing business with your significant other it's a whole you gotta be strong challenge. yeah you gotta be strong both of you independently maturely you know it's just there's a whole nother level of sacrifice and you cannot talk about your relationship with your friends that are not in the same they don't get it they don't don't get get it it. so yeah at the end of our episodes we 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 do a 10 second advice session anything on like not advice on everything like a hot take but you know just advice yeah um sometimes they'll be like oh make sure to i already know brush your teeth before you go to sleep no Um, oh you have one already go ahead go ahead go ahead i always say think about Everything that you have accomplished in your life and think about like the lowest point that you had that you thought you weren't going to make it and see how you came up, you know, came from it. Mm-hmm. Wait, I'm fucking this up. Can came we- okay. up from it. Yeah, yeah. Re- wait, wait, restart. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. Cut it. One more time. And cut. <laughs> I would say, you know, think about the lowest points you have had in your life that you thought you could not come from it and you have overcome it. And think about how successful you have been in 
areas that you're not passionate. Now think about how successful you will be if you are actually pursuing something that you care about and that you're doing from the heart. You know, yeah, there's a it. level of success you can touch. Yeah, I heard that. Mm. Yeah, now listen. Damn. Just do what you love. L- you listen can't again. Fail when you do what you love. That's Rewind. It. You heard listen that? that again. There you go. Yeah, like go that. back. Go back a couple yeah, seconds and hear seconds? that again. Hear do that again. what you Let's love. Go. You can never fail when you do what you love. Oh my god. From the heart. And she said it again. I needed that. And she said I needed that. Uh, before they wrap it up, I just want to say thank you so much for you know having me here thank you for making me comfortable i love you guys i've been watching you and i'm very excited to see all the barriers that both of you individually and together break and um to many more episodes to many more having great great guests and you know to many more series of people that are watching this you guys are motivating inspiring them so continue doing this and thank, thank you, you for having Lindsay, me thank of you, that's course. you not yeah. only did you like just end it with the 10 second advice but then you like yeah, oh my god like, shed a tear give us a little motivational no, speech yeah. i mean, yeah. I mean yeah. do you have hey, a 10 hey, second advice for- i do but i don't but but thank you thank you for everything for everything no, that you said like i feel like like real like real life like motivated and like inspired by like things yeah. that you've said like, like every, everything aside, you like, say has so much passion yeah. in it and like people can feel your energy and like your resilience through the screen or even talking to you and i feel like people are gonna just learn so yeah. much from like, you and be so inspired by your journey and like again you were one of the first bangladeshi woman that i knew that was at, like actually breaking barriers and going into a route that was like not made for us really and I'm just like so excited to see where else you go. You know, like, yeah. like you remind me a lot. Of, you remind me like a lot of my sister. Like she's yeah. like she's super. Yeah. She's become super successful in like her career, and like she's been through a lot, and she's been through like trials and tribulations. But she still carries like this like love and softness Humility, and passion, like excitement, yeah. and like I, I sense that in you. You know, so like yeah. so yeah. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. You got your ten second advice. Uh. <laughs> um, Did you think of one? Um. <laughs> If your if your kitchen knife is dull, it's time for a new one. If you need, if you needed a sign to get a new one, I you need a new one. I've or, I've or almost get a sliced. sharpener. That's too much work. Like oh. we don't we don't got time oh. for all that. Just get a new knife. You it's only gotta be expensive. Yeah. 15, 20 bucks, right? Is that is that okay? How, what's like the uh, what's a good a good price for a kitchen knife? I don't know. You say you don't need the sharpener. I, I don't, and now I'm looking I'm at so you sorry. sideways. Okay, okay. Yeah, she's mad okay. at you. you I just don't know. I just don't know. I see. I, I see dull? videos of like people sharpening shit. I just like that's too complicated. Just go buy a new one. Yeah. I've almost sliced my finger like multiple times. Yo, it's listen, time for when you I, start sharpening the knife, you 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 are on another level. Oh, you got to get on that shelf level. Oh. Yeah, that's Come what I'm saying. Okay, if you say like that, you say like that, get a sharpener. Get a sharpener. Oh, hey, Facts. yo. Facts. You're doing tricks I'll in the kitchen. Happen. I'll yeah. make that happen. All right. My my 10 second advice is instead of primarily considering Botox right away, <laughs> maybe think about like um <laughs> some skin care. Retinol, no, retinol. <laughs> because I had a fa- I had a facial the other day after like many years or like a year. And she was like, Yeah, like after 25, you should probably consider a retinol because it like makes your wrinkles like not come in as much. Mm. If you care about things like that. Just like, you know, before the needles and before the You'll need all that. injections and things like that. You'll need Think all about that. some retinol. You know? You're beautiful the way you are. <laughs> Just with some retinol. <laughs> yeah, and sunscreen. With SPF. Sunscreen. He's been on the SPF. I've been a big SPF yeah. guy. Yeah, she's changed my life when it came to, came to skincare. Yeah. Before I met her, it was straight water. <laughs> after you know i got Bruh. not even not even all right Cancel. plug your plug your socials and everything before we sign off oh. where can this we should find have been you in the beginning oh, okay. <laughs> we're an hour 20 um, minutes in well you can follow us at the monkey king nyc <laughs> and my personal is oh munzy oh my god oh munzy she just it'll be linked down change. everything's everything yeah, is in the link it's just too much to type out everything. Mm. really i liked it though I so liked you it too. i know it's yeah. on both me and you i'm bringing back if i do a cooking show or something all right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this. If you made it this far, please drop down the monkey emoji. Monkey, the monkey emoji. I need some monkeys in the comments. Yeah. Thank you guys so Make much. Make sure for to, to this like and episode. subscribe if you are watching on YouTube. If you're listening on Apple, Spotify, yeah. and everything else. Make sure to rate and review. Rate us. Collection out soon. New collection out soon. It's right there. New collection out soon. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks so <laughs> yeah, much for actually. Listening. <laughs> All right, and we love you guys so much. A good one. I love this. Bye.